Welcome to the Global Missions Podcast, a program for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work, both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes, or to suggest a particular topic or guest you would like to hear featured on the program. You can also engage with us through Twitter and Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And now, here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to his friends as Mags. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode. I'm really excited about sharing this particular interview about social media and short-term missions, some very helpful ideas from Shana Wynn and how she used it to support this summer's trips from her church. Just as we get started, though, I want to mention something really important. In the post-production of this episode, one of our producers noted that we didn't mention anything during the interview about a very important topic, and that is security. So I want to mention here a brief but clear word of caution as you think about posting material on social media. Remember that when it goes out there, it's public. So please be sure to check with the leader of the short-term missions trip about any potential security or privacy concerns. This could relate to the location, or a particular ministry or particular people related to the trip, including mission workers on the field. No one obviously wants to jeopardize anyone's safety or ministry by posting something to social media. So with that caution noted, we want to share with you this mission resource. Have you taken Kairos? The Kairos course is a nine-session interactive course on world Christian mission designed to educate, inspire, and challenge Christians to active and meaningful participation. Visit www.kairoscourse.org today to find a course near you. And now, here's today's interview. If you're a regular listener of this podcast, you might notice that we usually publish on Tuesdays. This episode is going up just a few days early to match up with a special missions conference in Ottawa, Ontario. You'll understand when you hear the introduction in just a moment. Our guest today is Shana Wynn, who serves at one of my very favorite churches in all the world, the Metropolitan Bible Church, better known as the Met in Ottawa, Ontario. Her role at the church is focused on missions. And includes an upcoming conference, right, Shana? It does. Just How many days? 11 days away. Okay, 11 counting? days away. <laughs> it's a big event in the church's annual calendar. And uh, Shana herself has participated in a number of short-term mission trips. She's passionate about using short-term missions to spur people on to their passion or in their passion of fulfilling their Great Commission as the Lord calls them to serve that way. She's served at the Met since 2010. And she's married to Graham, and she has a precious little one, a little girl named Alexa. So, Shana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. This morning's topic is going to focus around social media. And I'll just mention for our listeners, there's another episode that we did at the end of last season on social media as well. You might be interested in that. We'll put it in the show notes. It was episode 28 with Scott Morrow. It's kind of a foundation conversation. And now we have an opportunity to pick this up. Our topic today is using social media with short-term missions. And so, Shana, just as we get going, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be passionate about missions? Well, I think you covered um, a lot of the details of my life. Uh, I work at a church. I'm married. I have a daughter. Um, but my my own passion for short-term missions uh, came through through missions conference, and I think mm. that's why I'm so diligent and excited about working on conferences in present day. Because I mm. got to sit in the seats before I even became a Christian uh, as a teenager and hear about these incredible experiences, mm. um, just things that I couldn't even wrap my mind around, and then later got to participate in myself. And so mm. that had a lot to do with my own passion. So mm -hmm. missions conferences, short-term missions, getting out there and doing it myself really formed a lot of who I am today and, and where that passion came from. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear you say that a missions conference was valuable in your life. And even as a teenager, it was valuable or a, a young person, let's say. Mm -hmm. No, I was I was 15 when I sat in my first missions conference. I was mm. not uh, saved at the time. Mm. I had no real concept of, of who Christ was, let alone mm. 
that people were giving up their lives to go and serve him. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was a really foundational part in my coming to know Christ. Mm. I was challenged by these people who left their families, who left their jobs, who left all of their comforts to serve this God that, you know, I eventually just wanted to know so much about. Wow. Wow. Well, that's got to be some encouragement, I think, to churches and missions committees. I hope to our listeners that in some cases we think that maybe missions conferences are outdated or they are not useful anymore. And while I think we need to reinvent them and to recast them and to enliven them, you're saying that they are still very valuable. Your experience is testimony to that. It is. And and that's our, our hope as we move forward. Yes, we have to change things and tweak things so that you know, we're meeting a current audience, but we mm. hope more than anything that our conference is a time to spur people towards their own passion and their own desires and that they'll get out there and yeah. go on short-term missions trips and take an interest for themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, that's super. Now, our, our main topic today is going to be about social media. It's this movement which over the last well, let's say a few years, 10 and 15 years maybe, has become so normal. Um, It's how people communicate. And so we want to bring this conversation to short-term missions. And I have observed how Shana has used uh, social media to help the church uh, engage. I'll jump in on last summer, Shana. Last summer, you used social media to help keep the church updated on several short-term mission trips that were sent out from the church. Can you just set the context for us? Describe what that looked like. Well, practically speaking, uh, it was, you know, a fairly simple concept. It was a a graphic, it was a hashtag, and it was uh, consistent posts with details or or prayer requests that were pertinent to that specific trip. We used uh, graphics so that it would be something that would draw people's attention, and so Just keeping this really simple and bare bones, I took a picture of a country, I put a colorful filter over top of it, and I wrote, for instance, hashtag missions Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Just something to get people's attention as they're scrolling through kind of just the endless Facebook feed. Uh, Mm -hmm. Something that would stop and they would see and it was bright and Mm -hmm. they could expect it there each and every day. You're right. And we will include some graphics in the show notes, by the way, for our listeners. If you're if you're driving or walking or whatever and hearing this on the show notes page, we'll include some of these graphics there. And that's, in fact, what drew me to this very conversation with you, Shana, because I was one of the people scrolling through my Facebook feed, and I follow the Met or Met Missions, and there it was. And on a daily basis or next to daily basis, as often I was there, I would see this graphic and it was in different colors, but the the uh, filter was the same. So it was recognizable, and it it caught my eye. And I did want to be praying. And busy people, even busy people want to pray. It was short, it was manageable, and it looked sharp. So uh, well done. Thank you. Uh, talk to us. What channels did you use? You mentioned Facebook. Was it just Facebook this last summer? Uh, we primarily use Facebook. We find that we got the the most engagement through Facebook. We've tried Twitter, but our people just aren't engaging as much with Twitter. So we used what works and we, we stuck with Facebook and uh, it, it was pretty successful. Good. How did you measure your success? When you say it was successful, how do you know it was successful? <laughs> uh, people praying. Um, mm-hmm. That was the, the main thrust of this campaign or initiative, whatever you wish to call it, Mm -hmm. um, we wanted people to be praying. Uh, We wanted to take away the excuses. We wanted to take away the, my schedule is too busy or I didn't think of it. And we wanted uh, to simply have people committing to praying for these short-term trips while the people were away. Mm -hmm. And so our success really is measured by the feedback. It's interactions that I would have with people in the church hallway saying, hey, I saw your post and I remembered to pray or thank you for posting something about my son or daughter. Uh, Mm. And then there's likes. I mean, you trust that if someone takes the time to like a post, then they've actually read it. And, you know, more than anything that we posted in our, our social media pages, 
Mm -hmm. These generated the greatest amount of likes. Okay, that's good. And uh, by providing something brief, I think you encourage that engagement too. I know I stopped to pray over people. In this case, I don't. I didn't know personally any of the people on these teams, but I stopped to pray for that, and I had a sense of awareness and even ownership of what was going on in in Guatemala because of because of the uh, posts. Uh, mm -hmm. That's actually one of the, the greatest challenges that I found in my own experiences with short-term missions is that people genuinely want to pray. Mm. But if you've never been to that particular country, if you've never been on a short-term trip, you might not know how to pray or the best way to be specifically praying for them. Mm -hmm. And so if prayer seems like a daunting task, then you're less likely to do it. And so we really wanted to take the guesswork out of things. We wanted to make it easy and practical for our people so that they were just praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this helpfully sets the context and the goals that you had and even some of the measurements that you had uh, as far as likes or, or acknowledgments, which came up and down the hallway at the church, so to speak. And uh, the Met is a larger sized church. I don't know exactly how many people attend at the Met now, but it's an example of uh, three services on a Sunday morning. Uh, so it's a very significant sized church as well. Now, you're dedicated to this, right? You have a staff role? Yes, I do. Um, you... I'm privileged enough to to be on staff, but mm -hmm. I, it is a part-time capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's worth noting is that, you know, this social media campaign didn't have to be something that required you know, a full-time dedicated person. I work one day a week in the office and I was okay. able to accomplish this with uh, just one or two hours of, of prep time for all of our trips. And we sent four or five trips out this year. Super, super. Really important to note that it is manageable. It, this doesn't require a professional full-time uh, person doing this, uh, but with a bit of preparation, it's accessible to... Well, significant sized churches, but also smaller sized churches who, who have faithful volunteers working on this. Absolutely. Well, let's go to some of the nuts and bolts behind the scenes. Um, in order for a church to run a campaign, if we could call it a short term campaign, communication campaign mm -hmm. using social media, what are some of the things you would recommend that they think about in advance? How do they begin the planning? Well, we, we really used our short-term leaders as the biggest resource. They know the details of their trips. They know the participants. They know, you know, the travel arrangements. They know what the prayer requests are. And so I met or emailed or phoned each of the leaders uh, before the trip. And I got, you know, the itinerary. I got the biggest challenges. I got how we could specifically be praying for the leaders versus the team as a whole. Uh, mm -hmm. And I worked with them in unison to to find the best things that needed to be communicated for their team. So you really had an advocate or at least a point person uh, that you began with. Yeah. I mean, I can assume that I know all of the details. I book their flights as part of, of, part of my job. But mm -hmm. I mean, I've never been to Guatemala. I've never been to Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't in those phone calls with the country contacts. And so I really wanted to make sure that we were getting the best information available for our people. Mm -hmm. What did you include in the data you were collecting? You mentioned uh, their trips, for example. So you had some dates, maybe hmm. travel dates, things like that. What are other ideas that you were looking for in advance? Well, we wanted to post every day. So with that as our desire, we needed to know what was happening for each day. How could we best paint the picture for the people who were praying? And so if day one was travel day, we wanted to know what time does the flight leave so that we could be praying for good travel. Uh, Mid-trip, we wanted to know what are the challenges that come with being five days into ministry? Are they tired? Um, are they going to start feeling challenges? Are they sick? You know, whatever might come. Uh, and so really just looking day by day and breaking it up that way. Because I knew I want to have one post every day minimum uh, available to our congregation. So what do we need to know about each and every day? Sure. That's good. 
Um, now, that was all put, or at least a good part of that was put into place before they left for the field. Um, how long in advance did you were you working on this? How long before the trip left? Well, there has to be a balance. Our trip leaders are you know, up late packing the week before. They're trying to get all of the details together, but we don't want to be in touch with them too early because, you know, there's still going to be some key components that are in play. And so I found that uh, contacting our, our trip leaders about two or three weeks before the trip was a really good balance for both sides. Okay. It made sure that everything was in place. They knew their travel details. They knew their ministry details. They mm -hmm. knew their their participants, they had gotten to know their teams, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't such a hectic scramble that they weren't able to give us their best resources. Wow. Super advice, uh, finding that balance. Now, that was all in advance. Then you kind of hit the flurry. Like you said, the last week of activity is really, you know, pressed in many cases. Mm -hmm. How about when they were away on the trip? Did you have any direct contact with them uh, while they were away? We, we were fortunate in that most of our trips are places that are Wi-Fi accessible. Um, mm -hmm. It might not be every single day, sure. uh, but all of them were able to communicate at least two or three times throughout the trip, which was a great help because I can put out these requests. I can put out this information, but uh, the reality of short-term missions is that things change. Um, yeah. And so they were able to come in and kind of correct schedule details if things had changed or or really let us know how things were going on the ground. And I found even, you know, just having a, a team member post two or three times a week and include some pictures and include some updates also motivated our people more uh, to show an interest in the campaign and be checking for updates and be checking for what had been posted for that day. Uh, a lot of it was moms who wanted to see pictures of their kids or husbands who wanted to see their wives. Uh, but it's a start. And so, you know, if we can get a couple pictures up that day, like it, it, it really catalyzes uh, the whole initiative. Mm -hmm. Just talk for a minute about the balance between text and visual. Um, I'll say, you know, visual. It could be photos. Perhaps that's going to be most reasonable photos and or video. Um, I, I want to first and foremost say, you know, I'm not a graphic designer. I have no background in that area. But uh, just in looking at my own experience on social media, we are more and more a graphic based society. Mm -hmm. um, I won't stop and read the article that's three or four paragraphs. I want to see the quick and concise, you know, little tweet of information. And that's just where we're going. Mm -hmm. And so I see incredible value in giving people the graphic references as well to draw them in. And yes, you know, text is still an important part of that, but just the reality is we need to draw people in now. There's so much information coming through social media. They're inundated with it. And so I think that, you know, pictures or, or graphics are an important aspect in getting people to just stop and reflect and take interest. Yeah. More great advice. It's not the end of the story, but it is the, in some cases, it's the attractor to even, you know, earn, <laughs> earn the opportunity to read a paragraph. Exactly. Uh, will come through the visual, right? Wow. Very, very helpful stuff, Shana. Uh, and I'll just remind our listeners again, all these ideas we'll capture and put in the show notes. So you'll see it in a concise uh, form there. And it might, uh, might comprise a bit of a list that would be useful to you or your church as you think through this. Shana, I wonder if we could talk about the tools you used. We talked about channels. So um, did you use the website directly? Did you use did. anything on the Met website? Um, oh, did I use our church website? Right. That's what I meant. Not, not a great deal. No. Okay. Um, so as not so much the website. You were using the social media channels for the church. We're a very big church. And so information is very hard to get pushed through. Uh, it's right. very hard to take notice. And we find, for us at least, that our Facebook page is more intentional. People who already have an interest in missions are going to our Facebook page to find out. And so for us, it was just a more practical, a more utilized tool than our website would be. Sure. Now, let me just clarify here that you actually have a channel, a Facebook page for missions, 
distinct from the Met missions. That's right. Uh, or the Met. We have a, a dedicated Met missions page. Mm -hmm. um, for privacy reasons, it's a, a closed page. We have uh, a great deal of our own missionaries in the page. Um, mm -hmm. And so depending on their locations, we've kept it as a private page. Um, but, you know, anyone in our congregation can join. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a great tool, not only for our congregation to find out information about our short-term opportunities and what our own people are doing, mm -hmm. but it connects them with our missionaries as well. And so yeah. that was our greatest motivator in creating a dedicated Facebook page rather than using our website or using other tools as mm -hmm. our communication centerpiece. And for those people who may not be familiar with this, it is possible to have, of course, multiple uh, associations with a church. This is the Met Missions, but it's a, a closed group, as Shana said, so that essentially, Shana, you can vet who is part of that group. It's not public, right? That's right. So that may be something for uh, folks to consider as well, having a, a distinct channel. Uh, there can be a lot of voices coming out through a church, like you said, especially if it's a larger church. Uh, that maybe there's going to be value in having that mission's voice being distinct. So you used Facebook primarily. You mentioned you've tried Twitter. I mean, there's Instagram, Snapchat. There are a whole bunch of other things, but you stuck mostly to Facebook. I did. Um, I just, I found that that worked. Um, Facebook really appeals to a wide demographic. Um, mm -hmm. The older generation have figured it out. The younger generation although they spend a lot of time on Instagram and Snapchat, they're still there. And so, you know, this was just the best bang for our buck, really. There are a whole bunch of channels here, but if you had opportunity to just do one, Facebook is really the one that has the broadest range. We found that uh, in a whole bunch of different contexts, and it's affirmed here by Shana as well. Going on from there, as far as getting your stuff ready, Shana, were there websites or programs or apps that you used and that you would recommend to a church or to a missions committee who wanted to put together some of this material? Yeah, well, to be honest, my graphics were just created in PowerPoint. Um, I find that if you take the time to really uh, get to know that program, to be pushing the buttons, to be, you know, trying things out, that PowerPoint actually has a lot of graphic capability. Um, so, you know, take some time, play around, import some pictures, see what you can do there. Um, and then just on a, a more practical side, um, mm. I used Hootsuite, which is H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. Um, like the owl. Yeah. Um, but it's this incredible program that lets you pre-schedule your posts because um, looking specifically at our, our short-term posts, they were up there at 6 a.m. I wanted them up at a time uh, before people started their day while they were eating their cereal and they had, you know, dedicated time to be on Facebook and checking their things for the day, as well as before our team started their day so that we could be praying, you know, before they had gone out to ministry. Uh, sure. But I had no desire to be up at 6 a.m. every morning uh, <laughs> putting these posts out there. And yeah. so Hootsuite is this incredible tool that lets you schedule things uh, right to the minute, uh, months and months in advance. And so it lets you manage your content. You can make sure that you don't have 12 posts going through in the same five minutes and bombarding people's pages. It can let you make sure that you don't have, you know, dead silence for weeks on end, mm -hmm. but it really lets you manage uh, what's going through at what times and how much of it. And so That's that was an invaluable tool to me because I am not a morning person. Excellent. Excellent advice. And it, it's a wonderful tool. Um, it also will do multiple streams as well. So Facebook, you can prepare your posts there. But if you're also using Twitter or uh, other social media channels, Hootsuite will manage all of that in just a remarkable way. I agree. It's a fabulous program. I'll just ask here if there's a, some of our listeners have other ideas as far as handling the graphics, for example, what do you use on your phone? If you take a quick shot and you filter it and, and post it, you're creating memes, whatever. If you've got ideas on that, then drop us a line into the Facebook uh, page for the podcast as well. Uh, we'd love to hear your suggestions and what has worked well for you. Drop us a line on the website there. Well, I've tried to kind of bring out some of the main ideas here, Shana, but I wonder, are there any other tips or hints or advice that you would have for a church or a missions committee or even an individual 
who wants to use social media in conjunction with short-term missions? Mm -hmm. I've really, um, I've wrestled with this question. You know, I've really been wondering what is the best piece of information I can give churches and ministries out there. And, and really, I think it just comes down to doing something. Mm. Be present, be putting things out there. Um, and that's that's really the journey that we've been on is, you know, if we put something out there, is there engagement? Is there likes? If not, how can we change it? Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of it is trial and error. See what works for your your people. Um, do they respond to having daily reminders? Do they respond to, um, you know, more weekly or video or mm-hmm you know, different things. Um, Each ministry, each congregation is going to be different, uh, but I think trying it is key. Um, Mm. It doesn't have to be something over the top. It doesn't have to be, you know, the fanciest thing out there. Like I said, I don't have, you know, a graphic design background. I don't have a background in in a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, But we just try things and we see what works and we see what people respond well to. And Mm -hmm. if they don't, then, you know, we're constantly just trying to think of new things. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a good piece of advice because there are so many options, so many opportunities. I mean, you can use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, it goes on forever. Um, But not to be paralyzed by too many options out there. Rather to say, take one. And certainly we'd recommend Facebook. I think you would too, right? I would, yeah. If you're going to do just one, if you can manage just one, go with Facebook and begin to do something. We've tried a couple of, you know, other channels, but I, I, likewise, I know churches who have a really great response on Twitter and have Mm -hmm. really great Instagram campaigns and that works for their demographic and that works for their people. Um, But Facebook is a really great common denominator. Mm. Well, this has been Super, Shana. And I know that we've just kind of rolled around in some of the the top levels. Um, If people had other questions that they wanted to bounce off you, um, how could they reach you or follow you? Reach out to uh, Shana at the back. (laughs) Um, Well, Facebook has kind of been our common thread. And so I would say start there. I'm I'm on fairly regularly. Uh, My personal page is a great place to start uh, Shana Wynn. But I'd also say feel free to drop me an email anytime. Uh, my email address is swin or S-W-I-N-N at metbiblechurch.ca. And I'd love to chat and I'd love to hear about what's working for other people, about you know what's worked for us and just how we can be mutually bridging this communication gap between missions and our people. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being generous with your ideas and sharing what you've learned and for being open to more communication. Um, We appreciate what the Met is doing and thank you for being on the program today. Oh, it was definitely my pleasure. Well, that's it for today. The Global Missions Podcast is produced by the Jaffrey Centre for Global Initiatives and SEND International of Canada in collaboration with other like-minded agencies. And we invite you to join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore this grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.